Okay, friends, it's time to get started on replacing our fuel pump. To do this fuel pump, typically it's going to be accessed through the rear seat of the actual passenger compartment. A couple things to think about is your fuel level offhand. If you're sitting approximately over half a tank of fuel, you're going to want to make sure that you drain some of that out of there. That's something to think about. Of course, we're going to be dealing with fuel, and that's a chemical. You want to make sure that you have hand and eye protection at all times. Aside from that, make sure that you have the proper fuel pump for this. If you have the all-wheel drive version, you want to make sure that you have this nub coming out the side right there. We're going to start off right under the hood and remove our negative battery terminal. Set that aside so it's making no contact with your battery. Now, if you were sitting a little bit over half a tank, typically what you're going to want to do is try to siphon some of that fuel out of your system. To be able to drain out your fuel, you would just want to follow your fuel neck all the way down till it reaches up to the fuel tank itself. You're going to be able to see that you have a rubber hose that connects onto it with a clamp. What you want to do is just go ahead and remove that clamp right there, or at least loosen it to the point that you can remove the hose from the fuel tank. After that, you want to at least try to drain out at least half of the tank of fuel in this if you have a full tank. If you don't and you're already sitting at a half a tank or less, you're all set and you don't need to do this step. Now, after you're sure you only have at least half a tank of fuel or less inside of your tank, you want to make sure that you go ahead and put that hose back on there and tighten the clamp. After that, go ahead and get inside the back seat of your passenger compartment. We're going to go ahead and remove this seat right back here. As I run my hands along the bottom, you're going to feel that there's a little nub that you can grab onto. Once you grab it, you can slide it to the side and lift this up. Do that on both sides and then we can get this right out of the way. To slide this out from the back, you need to slide back and up and then you can remove it. Now with that seat out of the way, the next thing we want to do is remove this cover right here. There's three mounting bolts, go ahead and get them out of the way. Now that we have that panel out of the way, we have a nice clear view of where our fuel pump's going to be located. The next thing that I like to do is just take some of these absorbent pads or whatever you might happen to have that you're not worried about getting ruined and I just kind of stack it around the area. That's just in case when we're removing this, if any fuel happens to be still on the pump and it drips along the way. Now the next thing that I want to do is take some nice compressed air and just try to get off any of the debris that you might see in this area. Any of this could potentially fall into the fuel tank which of course will cause damage to your fuel pump in the long run. The next thing that I like to do is start disconnecting the wiring from that. What you're going to notice is as you squeeze on the tab that's located right on the side right here, squeeze it, pull it up, this is going to kind of come up and it's going to keep falling in your way. So I just take a nice forky tool, I'll get underneath here, pop this out of the way, and now we can just move this so it's clear of the area. To remove the fuel line, you're going to find that there's two tabs that you need to press in on and then draw this up. There's one on this side right along here and then one on that side. Just going to carefully press in on that tab and then we'll just get under it and that releases the locking tab. Now that we have that lock released, the next thing I like to do is just take a rag and I'm going to place it over this area while I start removing the line. The reason for that is of course there's going to be still fuel pressure inside the lines and I want that fuel pressure to be evacuated into my rag. All right, there we are. Make sure you drain out any fuel that might be inside the line here and then we'll set it aside. Now at this point we're going to continue on to removing this locking ring right here. You can see that there's tabs that are actually attached to the actual fuel tank and this ring actually spins counterclockwise and it'll unlock. The way that it unlocks is by when you spin this these tabs are going to line up with the holes along here and then you can remove the locking ring. Something to think about when you're doing this is you want to make sure that you don't create any sparks along the way. There is a possibility that there's fuel vapors sitting along this area and any spark could potentially be very dangerous. I'm just going to grab onto one of these ears and I'll start tapping it along. All right. So now we got that to break free. We can go ahead and press down on the fuel pump here and then we'll remove the locking ring. Inspect this. If it looks like it's good, typically you can reuse them. Now at this point, the fuel tank's going to be open and there is the possibility that there's going to be fuel vapors in the area. So just keep that in mind. The next thing we're going to do is carefully grab onto the fuel pump and we're going to take it right out of the fuel tank. As we start to remove this, you can see that there is actually still fuel inside of the fuel pump and you want to make sure that you don't dump this inside of your passenger compartment. Okay, now as we start removing this from the fuel tank, you're going to notice that you have another fuel line that comes across here. That fuel line is a siphoning line and it goes over to the other side of the fuel tank because of course this is the all-wheel drive version. Now to remove this line, you're going to find two tabs, one right here and one on the other side. You just go ahead and squeeze on those and then you can remove your line. 
Okay, now that we have that off of there, you can safely remove your fuel pump from the passenger compartment. Once you have your fuel pump out of the way, we're gonna continue on by removing our rubber O-ring here. You wanna make sure that you replace this when you replace your fuel pump. Let's set this aside. Next, you wanna clean out the area where that O-ring was riding. If there's debris inside this area, it's not gonna make a good seal. Once you have that clean, go ahead and take your brand new gasket. We're gonna slide it right on here. Should rest right into that ring that you removed the original one from. Clean and inspect our ring. Make sure it doesn't have any debris on it. Once your ring is cleaned and inspected and you know that it's good to go, we're gonna continue on by making sure that we have the fuel pump in the general location that we're gonna be working. The next thing we're gonna to have to do is get down inside this fuel tank and grab that fuel line. Typically, I don't like to reach inside of gas, especially if you're not wearing gloves. Now we can take our fuel pump and we're gonna connect it in. Press it in, listen for a click, and then make sure it's secure. Once you have that connected, we're gonna carefully put our fuel pump level float inside the fuel tank, and then we can start putting the fuel pump into the fuel tank as well. Now we're gonna carefully slide this down and line it up. We remember that we had our wiring coming right across this area here, so it's easy enough to realign that. Bring this tab right down in between these two ears and press it in. Now we're gonna grab our locking ring. We're gonna carefully put it over this area. While pressing down on the pump, I wanna continue on by pressing this locking ring down and into where the tabs line up with the actual fuel tank itself. There we are. Now that I have all those tabs lined up with their corresponding holes, we're gonna continue on by turning this all the way clockwise until it's completely locked in. When you look at this, you can see some little bumps that come up on the locking ring itself. They need to line up with the bumps that are on the locking tabs that are on the fuel tank. Once you have the locking ring started, you wanna double check to make sure all of the locking tabs on the fuel tank are sitting inside the ring where they belong. If one of them's out, it's gonna be sitting off kilter and it's not gonna make a good seal. After that, let's continue on by driving this all the way around clockwise like I said before. Okay, now I just need to inspect all of these tabs and make sure they're lined up with all the corresponding areas on the locking ring. At this point, we can reconnect in our fuel line. Lock it in, give it a wiggle. You wanna ensure that your fuel lines are nice and tight. You definitely don't want it to leak while you're driving down the road. Now let's grab our power wire. We're gonna slide it right in there, listen for a click. Give it a tug, and of course, make sure it's secured down the line. Let's just clean up our mess along here before we put our cover back on. Okay, that's nice and clean. Now let's move along to cleaning the body of the car. This is where the seal on the plate's gonna ride. Go ahead and reinstall your plate. I like to start all of my bolts in before I tighten any of them up. Now we can go ahead and snug these up. When I do this, I like to try to make sure that I'm not using something electric that might potentially cause a spark. There is, of course, gonna be fuel vapors in this area still. Now it's gonna be time to get our back seat back in here. Before you do that, it's a good idea to at least replace your gloves, and if you're not wearing gloves, just wash your hands. You don't want any fuel getting on the back seat. As we start sliding this in, you wanna pay attention to all of your safety belts. You wanna make sure that these are coming up and out from underneath the seat, and definitely not tucked in under it. I'm gonna slide it over the back hooks, make sure it's lined up, do the same on the other side, and then we'll come over here and we're gonna latch down the front. Okay, give it a tug, make sure it's completely secure. Double check to make sure all of your safety belts are out in the open because of course safety is paramount. And let's get back under the hood. Now re-emphasizing on making sure that you either changed out your gloves or washed your hands so there's no more fuel or fuel vapor on your hands. Let's continue on by reconnecting this. Slide it on there and make sure it's nice and tight. Okay friends, at this point the fuel pump is in there and we're pretty much ready to start this up. But something that I want you to think about is it's a good idea to make sure that you open up all the doors inside the vehicle itself and just let it air out for a little while. You were just working in there with fuel, so there's going to be fuel vapors and of course we don't want anything to go ahead and spark that up. After that, if you have the ability to be able to add the fuel that you removed from the fuel tank, go ahead and put it back in there at this point. And then go ahead and hop in, start it up, take it for a road test.